Well, good evening. I want to share with you a new little toy I've been playing with, actually, for about the last 11 months, off and on, as time allows. I've got this little device that is a programmable temperature alarm. So it comes with a very sensitive sensor that you can bolt to the engine, and you can program it at whatever degree you want for a loud piercing alarm to go off. So I've got it programmed. If it senses 220 degrees, a uh, loud alarm will go off. And the reason I want that is because our particular setup, when you have an 8.1 Vortec and a workhorse chassis, we do not have an idiot light when it comes to overheating. All we have is that gauge. So I cruise the forums a lot, reading about how people blow up their engines. I've talked to browsers and other people who work on these engines a lot. And when they do blow up, and I, I ask, well, what's their common causes? So there's three reasons we blow up. One is a sudden loss of coolant. So this device will protect me. If I have a sudden loss of coolant, or you, you blow a heater hose and it all dumps out. Because remember, you're going up a mountainside, you blow a heater hose, you're not going to get a warning light. All you're going to get is that gauge start creeping up. And you may not catch that gauge if you're busy in traffic and worried about other things. All you're going to know is the engine is going to start knocking, you're going to lose power, and that's all she wrote. Uh, there's two other things that causes our engines to fail. Uh, the other one is a bad fuel pump. So, and I've got that covered because I can monitor my fuel pump pressure on this gauge, and I've got a separate video on my channel showing how I installed that. But because you can have a fuel pump starting to fail, and you'll start running low fuel pressures, you'll starve the engine, it'll run lean. And that comes to the another problem, the fact that our fuel trims, when we run high fuel trims, most engines will throw a light. Unfortunately, for whatever the wisdom that Workhorse had, they've turned those monitors off. So we can be running a very lean engine, high fuel trims, and it will not set a light. So I've got that, that one covered. The, the other thing, of course, back to running high fuel trims, is if you, for instance, you had a vacuum line come loose, loose, you'd get unmetered air. Same thing's going to happen. You'll be running really high fuel trims. You'll be running lean, and the engine can only, ex I guess, add so much fuel. At a certain point, it just can't add anymore, so you run lean, and you melt a piston. Uh, or another problem can be the mass airflow sensor. They sometimes go bad. You'll hear pinging when you go up the hill, that kind of stuff. So because I got my scan gauge too, that's that device right there. I've actually got two of them. Because I got that, I can monitor my fuel trim. So I've got the, you know, I got those items covered. But I didn't have anything covered when it come. If I have a sudden loss of coolant. Um, also, you got to think about our heater hoses. See, we got these heater hoses. At least on my RV, those heater hoses run all the way back to the back of the RV, 20 feet behind me. So you could pop a heater hose back there in the rear off the water heater and have no idea spewing water out, dump it out engine overheat and you're done but with this little device for for less than 50 bucks i can hook this up and i've been experimenting with it so what i've done version 1.0 we'll call it uh here's here's the, the little wire runs down here and i've got the sensor bolted up to the back of the cylinder head and you see this big gob of insulation i had to do this because just bolting the sensor up to the cylinder head wouldn't get me accurate temperatures. You know, when I'm sitting still, it may be pretty accurate with what the computer is telling the scan gauge. Because because we got our coolant sensor, if you, if you don't know, this little connect, connector right here goes right into the cylinder head in between the, the two center spark plugs. That is your coolant sensor. So it tells the ECM exactly what temperature the coolant is. And of course, that also comes out on my scan gauge and gives me a digital readout. And because this is programmable, you can set it plus or minus, uh, I think, 9 or 10 degrees, whatever it's reading. So you can kind of fine tune it. So in order to make this work, I was getting such wild temperature swings, I couldn't get it dialed in. So I came up with this idea because I figured what was happening when I was going down the road, I was getting a lot of ambient air blowing around. So I'm going to take this chunk of insulation off because that, that stopped that ambient air and it made the temperature steady. But let me take it loose real quick. Okay, I've taken it off. And this is just, uh, I think they call it fiberboard. This is what they use to make duct work out of. This is just something I had laying around and it, it worked for me. I went to Florida and back with it uh, back in the winter 
and my temperature stayed steady and it worked well and you can see where I got the the sensor bolted right down there get a little more light on it it's a very sensitive sensor but you just if you have air moving around it, it, it messes with it so that does work for me so for 50 bucks and a chunk of insulation you can do the same thing but uh, I wanted something a little bit better so but let me show you how this works first and then I'll show you my version 2.0 Okay, so to give you an idea how this works, I've got my heat gun here, and I'm going to put it on that sensor, and I'm going to run the temperature up to 220 until the alarm goes off. Just to give you an idea how sensitive it is, you know, it, look at how quick that temperature starts climbing as soon as you put that on there. So I'm going to pause the video until I get closer. Okay, here we go. I've got, got, got it ready. So you're going down the road. You're not paying attention, the engine starts to overheat. Let's put this up here. And when it hits 210, the little red light will come on. And when it hits 220, So if you're driving down the road, you hit 220, you know you got a problem. It gives you a chance to get pulled off the road and find out what the heck's going on and save yourself five or ten thousand dollars for a new engine replacement. So I think that'll be a, a great investment for a do-it-yourselfer. About 50 bucks. Here's where you go to get it. Thermomart.com. So hope you enjoy that now. This is what I've been using. It's worked okay for me, but now I've upgraded it to just a little bit different design that I think I'm going to like a little bit better. Okay, I wanted to jump in here and show you a few of the components I used to put this together with. Of course, here is the little box itself with the alarm from thermomart.com. Here's the website, but I want to point out you want to make sure you get this particular item number. All right, there it is dash 12v that way you'll get the right one it's in fahrenheit uh, and not celsius and um, then this one will come with the bolt-on sensor uh, but like i said if you bolt it to the back of the cylinder head uh, temperature swing may be a little erratic you're going to have to put some insulation or something over it to uh, keep that in check um, so i experimented with that for a while and it worked okay so and what you're about to see next is how I incorporated this, which is a lot more sensitive sensor because it screws right into the water jacket and it picks it up the, the temperature that way versus uh, just bolting to the side of the cylinder head. And I also thought as an experiment, maybe someone else might do this, is this is a quarter inch uh, sensor that if a person just put insert that into one of those mounting holes on the back of the cylinder head. It might be more accurate, may not have the temperature swings that I was getting with the probe that was just bolted to the side where all the air current would, was getting to it. So that's a possibility, something to think about. You can see the item number for that there. But you might reach out to tech. Their tech service is good. You can uh, maybe ask them, get, get their input. And the last component uh, was this little ins insulated sleeve. I used that to protect that wire coming off the cylinder head to keep the heat away from it. So, all right, back to the video. Okay, in order to get this to screw into the cylinder head to get into the water jacket, I got to make a little something. I thought it'd be smart. I went on Amazon and ordered. I took a chance. I thought this would work. It's a one half inch bushing down to 10 millimeter, but it's the wrong, the wrong thread pitch. I need 1.5. This is a 1.0. So that's not going to work for me. So I went to town and I got me a solid brass plug and I got me a solid steel. And so these are half inch national pipe thread and I just have to tap it so this little device will fit in there. So it's going to be, uh, which is 10 millimeter, 1.5. So that's my next little challenge. Get past that hump and I can uh, get that put into the block and, uh, and see what kind of temperature readings we get from that. Okay, well I did a test run, as you can see, it got me some scrap aluminum 
I drilled it, and I drilled it with a what size? Eleven thirty seconds drill bit. I got it. Got a tap here from my handy Harbor Freight tap and die set. Don't leave home without that. Very, very handy. Use it all the time. And this is a ten millimeter, one point five threads. So that's what I've used to uh, to tap this, and it, it's working really good. So now, because uh, I got the solid steel plug I got this brass piece so I'll probably go with the brass piece as long as I got enough meat so I'm gonna put this in a drill press bore me a nice straight hole and tap it see what it looks like and I'll decide from there as you can see I don't have no fancy drill press it's a little Taiwan thing I've had here for years and I've got me some lubricating oil already in there I'm gonna hold this wrench nice and still turn it on and Try to get it bored nice and straight, and then we'll do some tapping. And there we go. Had quite a bit more meat in it than I was expecting, so I'm hoping this will work out for me. What well, sure does drill easy. Okay, as you can see, I'm trying to show this to you one-handedly. I've had to get a little creative. So here's what I'm doing. I'm rotating this pulley. At the same time, I got the wrench held in place over here, holding the, the bushing, and so that way I can rotate this and I can cut the threads. It's going pretty smooth. So I think I've got it through now. All right, but anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you how, how I had that rigged up, but it, it did work. Okay, I should explain why I did it, did it this way. Because, yeah, I could have just put it the, the tap in, um, in this little T-handle and cut my threads. But I was concerned about getting an absolutely perfect bore through that through this plug. So I thought, okay, well, I got this drill press and I got this flat machine surface. I could use that. So that's why I kind of did this rigging with the wrench and all that stuff. Kind of limited on tools. Not like I got a machine shop. So I just do with what I got. So that's how I did it. All right, well, here's the result. Turned out really well. Got the focus, got the threads in there. It, it screws in there. Very easy. And it goes all the way down, no, no binding. And I'm going to try to do everything one handedly. Is that a word, one handedly? Anyways. And that's what it's going to look like. So that'll pick up the coolant as it's rushing by through the cylinder head. Get me some accurate readings so I know exactly what temperature is going on. And I think I'm going to throw me a dab of Loctite on this just to make sure. And luckily I found out that an O2 sensor socket will fit this. So that will help me immensely when it comes time to install this into the cylinder head. So that is going to be the next little journey. Alright, so here you can see our goal is to gain access to that port, that plug. So we'll take this plug out because this just takes a, a 3 8 extension. Get my hand in here. Let's see. Just put that 3 8 extension in there. I've already got it broke loose. Actually, I broke it loose while I was above because I could get better leverage on it. So you see it's turning. So, but I'm going to work kind of fast. I'm not going to be able to film this with one hand. So I'm going to pull this out, quickly screw in my new sensor. The new sensor being right down here. Got it ready to go. Some O2 sensor socket ready. And I got me some pipe dope. I'm going to put on those threads just to make sure I get a good seal. So anyhow, so anyways, so wish me luck. Here we go. Well, I got to say that went pretty smooth, smoother than I thought. Here's the old plug. Only dropped just a little, little bit of uh, antifreeze out of it, not even a cup, cup full. So we got pretty good. So I'll finish putting the torque on this thing, and uh, we'll be able to test it here soon. Okay, so there's the final look. I have to run this wire up, but I need to think about. You know, we are pretty close to this manifold about putting some kind of uh, protection around that wire so it doesn't get too hot off the being supposed to the manifold so I need to give that some thought 
And then just in case you're wondering, the, the O2 sensor socket size is 7 8 So you might get in there with a wrench. There's a possibility you could get in there. It might be a little snug, but boy, that O2 sensor socket made it really easy, you know, because you got to deal with this wire. Okay, I'm just doing an inspection here. It's been a couple days. I ran the engine several times, making sure I got no leaks. All that is good. I got me a little insulation sleeve to slide down on the wire to protect it. I'll show you. I got, I got this here online, of course. So I'm a, it's a little long. I'm going to cut it, slide it down over there, keep that wire from getting too hot around that uh, exhaust manifold. And I'll be able to button this up here pretty shortly. Okay, to show you my final setup here. I got my wire on insulated and I ran it through several heat cycles. Uh, there's no leaks whatsoever. So all that looks good. So I just got to put a couple zip ties on top and uh, show you how I programmed this. And we'll be done with this video. Okay, and you can see from above how I ran my wires. They're all nice and protected. Comes up through here now. I wanted to point out how I got the wire up into the dashboard. So we have a metal plate that runs all the way across here and below the dash. Turn on light here, right down in that area. You can see kind of where that wire goes. Yeah, I think there you can see it. Down in there, that's the hole that I drilled. It's kind of tricky. I moved those hoses out of the way. So I punched that hole in there so I could get that wire. I've also got my wire from my fuel sending unit running up there also that controls that gauge so anyhow i got the wire going up there and at the, at the moment let me close this down so at the moment you see i've just i've just tucked the wires from underneath the plastic here got it going into my, my new, new little control temperature box here I, later on i'll probably carefully put me a square hole and, and put it right right there it's got to probably look nice but I'll do that at a later time because I'm still just want to test it, make sure it's gonna be good to go. I just got me a little piece of velcro on there right now to make it easy. Okay, test number one. You can see I'm sitting at 52.8 degrees. That is with the sensor that's bolted to the back of the cylinder head. So I've got my wires down here coming off the sensor that I've screwed into the block. It's just two wires. So I'm going to hook those up the back of it and see what reading I get from it okay now you see I got it hooked up to the um, sensor that's monitoring the actual coolant temperature and at 52.5 so pretty dang close okay I just started the engine up that's been started for days but look how sensitive that is look how quick it starts climbing pretty cool uh, I'll let that warm up Get it to operating temperature and compare it with what the, uh, the computer says. The computer is. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, I'm hoping this is my final test. Uh, just fired up the engine. You see, we got 49 degrees on the head. The computer says 51 degrees. ECM says it's 51 degrees. ECM says it's 51 degrees. A thermal couple says it's 51 because you've got to keep in mind, you know, I've got more or less two different. I got the factory is measuring the temperature of the cylinder head or the coolant flowing through the cylinder head on the right hand side. But that little device I just put in is measuring the temperature of the coolant flowing through the cylinder head on the left hand side. So uh, now right now they're standing within one degree of each other. So I'm going to let this, it's kind of a chilly day, I'm going to let this warm up, get operating temperature, and uh, see it, make, make sure it stays steady. Okay, we're fully warmed up, 179 degrees, because I got a 180 degree thermostat. And you can see the ECM is also reporting the same temperature. So I got them both dialed in really well. So I like that, and I was going to show you, I've also added my little insulation sleeve to protect my wire. And um, I'm going to show you here. I'm going to show you some settings. Okay, I know this video is running long. Um, 
But I just had another thought because I'm always thinking. Uh, because remember my first experiment, how I, how I had this sensor bolted to the back of the head and I was getting some air turbulence and ambient temperatures, just wasn't dialed in just right. I did get to thinking though, you know, because we have these engine mounts or old holes down there, so we got three to choose from. And um, I think it's a three eighths thread that goes in that. And, but the sensor won't quite fit in that hole. It's just a hair bit too wide because it's stamped out. But as an experiment, you know, if, if a person trimmed this off, I don't guess it would harm it. And uh, it, it got it down just where it would fit up inside that hole. Maybe throw a little JB weld in there with it. So it would be up, actually up inside the cylinder head. It could really pick up the heat that way and may not be affected by any ambient air that's whipping and blowing around when you're going down the highway. Anyway, that might be for a later experiment, but uh, for anyone who wants to tinker, that might be uh, an option to ex experiment to try. You can let me know how it works out. But because I went with the, uh, the more, little bit more fancier feature where it actually screws into the cylinder head because I like how precise it is. It's right on the money within like two degrees of what the ECM says. All right, so now I'm going to try to show you a little bit how this programs. This, like, like, I, like I said before, you get this, this is made by Thermomart, there's a website, and I think it's only like 50 bucks or so, uh, companies out of Canada, ship it right to you, and uh, when you first get this paperwork, you're going to see a lot of diagrams, uh, a lot of information, and all kinds of settings and acronyms, and you're going to think, oh no, what have I got myself into, how am I going to program this crazy thing? Now, there's a lot of information here because this little box is very powerful. You can do a lot with it. You can, uh, I've seen people use these in chicken coops and incubators and all kinds of stuff because if you need some kind of super sensitive device that will turn on or turn off a heater, a relay, a compressor, this little box will do it. In fact, it has a 10 amp relay built into it. Uh, so actually, when it when I got it, my settings there, I'll show you the settings in a minute, you'll hear the relay, it will click as it, the temperature's climbing. And then at a certain point, if, if, if it's not satisfied, then the alarm will go off. So I'm going to try to show you, if you're going to use this in your workhorse, this is your settings you'll, you'll use. Okay, I'm going to show you up close here how I hooked it up. As you can see a diagram here, you got your power, 5 and 6, 5 being the line, and I do have it fused also. Okay, I did double check. I got a 3 amp fuse, so we're good to go there. Unless you was powering other things, relays and other devices, and then of course you'd need a, a higher amp fuse. All I'm doing is powering the box and powering the, the alarm function. That's all we need. But you can see down here below, you can power receptacles and turn on ceramic heaters and lights, anything you want to do with it. So uh, let's show you here a bit how we got the connections. So you can see, just like in the diagram, Go back here, diagram, diagram we got you know, 5 is power, 12 volts, we got the fuse in there, 6 is, is negative, come back here you see 5 and 6, red and the black wire is a little hard to see, there you go, red and black wire, and when it comes to the, the, the sensor probe, it's uh, it's polarity doesn't matter on it I don't believe, so I've got it, got it all hooked up, and you see the little dip switches down there, see that, that, that locks it. So once you get it programmed the way you want it, you put those two little dip switches, it's locked in in case you have kids running around like like to push buttons. Of course, I'm not a kid, but I like pushing buttons. But um, that way they can't unprogram what you programmed. So let's try to show you a little bit how to program it. And like I said, it can be a little confusing at first when you open this up. You see all these settings and all the stuff it can do. But, but we're going to try to keep things simple, and I'll show you how it works for me. So, first of all, you want to have your set. So, you push your set button, and for me, it's at 210. So, at 210 degrees, it's going to activate when these lights comes on it when, it when we hit set. So, we got that done. All right, the next setting, get my fingers in here in the right way, just push and hold set. And we got HD. I gotta remember what HD stands for. I gotta look at my notes here. Okay, that's the differential set. So we don't monkey with that. You can you can look at it. I'll show what the HD setting is. Go back into it. 
hit set again, it's at 01. So I'm leaving that alone. All right. Next is a a L, and that is set at zero zero. Let me see what A L stands for. A L stands for low temperature alarm setting. That's why I set it zero because we don't worry about no lo low temperature alarm. But there may be instances where you would. That's why this little box is so powerful. It does a lot of different things. Okay, A L. That's uh, alarm low, alarm high. So that's where we come in. So it's tense. That's what throw you off. That's what threw me off. Why is it saying 10? Well, what it does, it looks at your set number and adds 10 degrees to it. Remember our set? Our set is turned 10. So I guess that's when it activates. And then, you know, it's looking for maybe like a fan. That one engages the relay at 210. So imagine you had a scenario where you're trying to cool something down, an engine or whatever, with a fan. So at 210, it would come on. The fan would come on and supposedly start dropping the temperature. But if that temperature didn't drop, it kept climbing to 220, then the alarm would go off. So, of course, we're not, we're not engaging any fans or anything like that. We just want the alarm to go off at 220. So this is the way to make it do it. So again, let's see, there's our set button. And then uh, let's, go, let's go back to normal, and I'll push and hold. I don't know why I'm shaking. Oh. Let's go, there we go, alarm low, alarm high, like I said, that's set at 10 degrees plus, so it's, it's 210 plus 10 degrees, so it will go off at 220, alright, and that's alarm high, let's go back to P7, that is, um, what is that, let me look at that again, the P7, that was, oh, delay protection time, P7 is like if you had a compressor, that you was going to you was going to use this to turn a compressor on and off, or you can set a time delay so you don't engage the compressor too so, too soon, and cause any damage. All right, let's go back through the other settings. SD, alarm, alarm high, P7. Go calibrate. Okay, so for me, um, my calibration this is really makes it nice. So I can you can dial it in to exactly. Of what um, what the engine is saying. So for me, I've got it negative two degrees because uh, I've installed the, the thermal coupler that screws right into the engine block into the water jacket. It's much more sensitive. So actually, a negative two degrees off the default setting makes it dial into what the scan gauge is telling me exactly. They're both identical. Uh, as I'm driving down the road, it may fluctuate only one degree plus or minus. So I like how that works. Now, when I had the other little device screwed to the back of the head, in order to get it dialed in pretty close, I had to do plus nine, I believe, to get it dialed in because of the little bit of differential on the temperature. All right, let's see what else we got. What other settings? HD, alarm low, alarm high. That was the compressor protection. There's calibration. HS is, stands for... Oh, high temperature range, so that's at 230, so that's, that's the maximum setting it has. So that's where it needs to be. Let's go back to what else? LS, low temperature range, mine set at minus 40. I don't really use that in this application. CD is that's a differential set, that's at zero one. That's something we don't use. And HD, that's also differential heating set. It's also set at 01, and we're not using that in our application. And AL is 00. zero. AL stands for low temperature alarm. Okay, so I'll go back around again, it looks like. So um, that's pretty much it, I believe. I'm going to make sure I didn't miss nothing. Yeah. Alarm low, alarm high. Yep, we went through all the different settings. So if you set your box up, the way mine is set up, then um, as you're driving down the road, if you don't, you know, if you blow a water hose or something like that, and you don't catch it in time before you toast your engine, you're going to hear this audible alarm go off, give you a chance to get pulled off the road, find out what the problem is, and save yourself, you know, ten thousand dollars. I've seen that on the forum where people blow up their engines; they could spend ten thousand dollars or more to get an engine replaced. And uh, so this, if you want to try to do the best you can to protect your engine from, you know, like a, like I think I mentioned before, there's three reasons why we blow these engines up, the 8.1s. You know, we either running lean, 
So I've got that covered running lean by the fact that the fuel pump can get weak and you'll get no check engine light, no nothing. So I've got that covered because I got my fuel pump gauge right here. You see the little sending unit right there off the fuel rail. And, and I got a video somewhere on my channel, you can, you can find that. And then of course also, the next thing that can blow our engine up is, is uh, running lean, uh, running double digit fuel trims. So with my scan gauge 2, that takes care of that. If you own an 8.1 and a workhorse chassis, you should not leave home without a scan gauge 2. So I got so the third thing, of course, that can blow us up is sudden loss of coolant, sudden increase in temperature. You know, you know, we got to keep the heat out of these engines, and that's where this little alarm will come into play. Because also, you got to look, see these heater hoses we've got run all the way back here with mine. Those heater hoses run all the way back to my water heater, 20 feet behind me. So and these hoses are 15 years old. If I was to pop a hose 20 feet behind me, I'm going to have no idea. I'm just going to pump all that water out. If I'm busy going down the road, listening to an audio book. I'm not going to have any idea that this little dumb gauge down here is, is spiking the H because it will not trip a light. There is no temperature light. We don't have one. We just have the gauge. And most likely I'm not going to see it. Uh, but with this little box, I'll have an audible alarm and I'll be able to pull off the road and, and save my engine. And so hopefully we don't never need something like this, but it's just cheap insurance. Cheap insurance. So anyway, I hope you uh, enjoyed this little video and uh, you can get your get your 8.1 protected and get just maybe we can get about 400,000 out of this 8.1 that'd be great to see thanks bye